Well, I do just three questions. This is uh, the Christian News Journal, and um, we have a beautiful, beautiful woman inside and out here. And uh, you all know her. She's a trailblazer, an author, a leader, a mentor to many, many women. And that's Alvita Kim. And Alvita, thank you so much for being with us for three questions. Okay. Well, Corinne, I'm so glad to join you and your audience. Hello, everyone. Love it. Love it. Just talk. I, I'm a big fan, so I, I'm trying to be professional here. Okay. Oh, girl. All right. Here we, all go. here we go. Okay. okay. Um, as you know, there's it's it's very hard right now for many people. How do you stay focused on God during, you know, I won't say post-COVID, uh, just trials, COVID, post-COVID. How, how does your faith sustain you? I was trained by a faith pastor, Pastor Alan McNair. I joined a church called Believer's Bible Christian Church in Atlanta, Georgia in 1987. And during his lifetime, until he left the planet in 2015, he encouraged all of us who would agree with him to read the Bible every day, to pray every day. And that really helped me to become focused and connected to God in ways that I had not been. I was raised by Baptist preachers. My daddy, Reverend A.D. King, my grandfather, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Sr., my uncle, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and my dad, Reverend Dr. A.D. King, actually. So they were all giants uh, in the faith of God. So I was born into a family. I went to church every Sunday, but my relationship with God did not become personal until 1983 when I was a born again mm -hmm. Christian. So every day I read the Bible, I pray, and I get answers from heaven on how to live here on earth. Now that's me personally. Everybody's listening, who's listening is not gonna read the Bible every day. Everybody might not even pray every day. So we have to at first just acknowledge that there's somebody bigger than us who made us and then have begin to have a desire to connect. Mm. Thank you. And second question, you guys get that? Okay. Second question is <laughs> gonna be, <laughs> Oh, you know, lovely, lovely cancel culture. Um, what are your thoughts on today's cancel culture? The cancel culture is so frustrating to me because the cancel culture itself doesn't want to be canceled, but they want to cancel everything else that doesn't agree with the cancel culture. So therefore, there's no opportunity, certainly for the Constitution of the United States, freedom of speech, that goes out the window because cancel culture says, if you don't say something that I agree with and that I like, and if you do say something that hurts my feelings, you're gone. So that to me is very sad and very unfortunate. I work very hard and I do have a show on Fox Nation. It's called Alveda King's House. I cook and I talk to people about sometimes tough issues. Mm -hmm. So the premise of the show is this, there's a lot of hospitality in the King family the family of Martin Luther King Sr. and Alberta Williams King, that's my grandparents. And so we are a family of hospitality, cooking and all of that. I said, we need to learn how to sit down and eat together and not get indigestion <laughs> because we don't like what we are saying to each other. Martin Luther King Jr. put it this way, we must learn to live together as brothers and all that as sisters or perish together as fools. So the way that we deal with that is to talk about the difficult issues. You may know about my book that Ginger and Howard and I wrote, We're Not Colorblind. Mm. And it says, we see color, we acknowledge color, we acknowledge ethnicity. And we acknowledge, uh, you know, there are there is racism out there. You racism know, is real. Is and, real. And, and, and can I say this is unpopular, but I need to explain it. Yes, ma'am. There is systemic racism. So for those who say it's, there isn't, but racism is a lie anyway, because we are one blood. Mm -hmm. And that means we are human beings. Acts 17, 26 says that. So they're not separate races. So anything that says mm -hmm. this race has to get along with that race, or this race is disproportionately more of that, or this race is better than that race, that is systemically entrenched in legislation, 
in conversation. And so when we are seeing ourselves as different races, it becomes systemic. So the way you get rid of it is to say, we are human beings, we are one race. We have different ethnicities, different body types, different body sizes, different bank accounts or lack of bank accounts. All of those things can be different. So cancel culture will not even accept that discussion because some people still want to worship skin color, I guess. I don't know. No, thank you for clarifying that because I think, you know, <sighs> Like you don't want people to get the, the wrong idea about you. You're trying to be careful on social media. You're trying to do, do this. You're trying to do this and be sensitive because I want to acknowledge that racism is real. And the racism is real because we think you, you're very beautiful. Your skin color, I would say, Ivy. Nobody's skin looks like a piece of white paper. No. Nobody's skin looks like a, a black leather jacket because you have blues and magentas and purples in that beautiful ebony colored skin and then in the uh skin that looks more like ivory or something like that even mm -hmm. the palest skin still has some color mm -hmm. so we are all people of color thank you ah oh. ah oh, thank you again oh yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. amen 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 okay now for this I'm, I'm sure you've talked about this many many times but i gotta ask you of course about the biden administration your biggest concern on this administration what are we 30 plus days in yeah my biggest concern people are kind of waking up and i'm getting emails and letters and tweets and things like that we have to be careful because they'll they'll cancel you cancel culture take you out of twitter and all these places very quickly however people are saying wait a minute did he really send money for abortion back over to mexico yeah that's probably one of the first things he actually did wow well uh did he really say he wants to get puberty blockers for kids until they decide what they want to be when they come out of puberty i said actually that's some the conversation that's going on. So people are waking up and they're like totally shocked and they just did not understand. And now they're beginning to understand. So what we do, what I do, I pray for every president, yes. vice president, every leader and every person who's in authority. And I pray the same way, God guide them. Let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Let their hearts become open and tender towards you so they'll know your will. I pray that for absolutely every leader everywhere, without exception, without discrimination. Okay. Would you recommend, I mean, is that something we just need to focus on at this point? Well, you got midterms coming up. And I think, I, I really honestly hope people will become honest and sincere and get past their hatred of uh, the 45th president, my friend, uh, the President Donald John Trump, they need to get past that hatred hmm. and do what's right. And it doesn't make sense to me. No, it, it doesn't. And um, no, I appreciate your thoughts. And I know you're busy. You got sh you got shows, you could probably, do you have any other projects that, that we can plug for you? You have your show, any new books or? Well, we've got show, the show, I'm the, uh, a pastoral associate at Priest for Life who works very closely with civil rights for the unborn. And you can go over to civilrightsfortheunborn.org. That's one of my assignments with Priest for Life as a pastoral associate. I have some new books coming out. Uh, the third edition of my cookbook is on presale. Also, I have another book on presale. This is an anthology of a collection of thoughts on from ancient Africa, Greece, no, by way of ancient Africa, Greece, and Calvary. Ooh. And so what happened with mythology, what happened with ancient religions, what happened when Jesus went to Calvary and rose again for us, all of those types of things are discussed in that book. I also am a music uh, songwriter, singer, producer, got some music out there. You can get that at alvedaking.com and the premier of the Roe v. Wade movie is Friday night. Please pray for us. I'm an executive director on that. So those are the kinds of things that I'm doing, but I'm so excited to talk to you and your audience. So and great. I really thank you for taking the time to ask me these questions. No, I thank you for your time and I can't wait to see the show. All right, and we'll be, we are praying for you, ma'am. Thank you, God bless, bless you. you. Yes, ma'am.